As the newly appointed human representative, my first walk into the chambers of the Galactic Council was less of an honor and more of a gauntlet. The sprawling council chamber was situated at the heart of the Galactic Assembly space station, orbiting a neutral planet at the edge of the council's territory. This colossal space was designed not just for debate, but as a symbol of the galactic harmony, with its high domed ceiling displaying a live map of the known universe. Each member species had their designated seating area, arranged in a semicircular fashion around the central podium, and above each area, holographic translators worked in real time, converting the multitude of alien dialects into comprehensible language. Upon my arrival, a murmur ran through the room, a soft cacophony of clicks, whirs, and hums, a reminder of the diversity I was about to engage with. I was escorted to the human section, a modest area with a simple metallic desk and a single seat, stark in its lack of adornment compared to the more elaborate setups of the other species. My guide, a protocol droid, gestured to my seat and said in a neutral tone, Ambassador, please make yourself comfortable. The session will commence shortly. Thank you, I replied, taking a seat. The droid bowed slightly, a programmed gesture of courtesy, before moving away. As I settled in, I scanned the chamber, noting the representatives. To my left, the Andarii delegates, beings of pure energy contained within shimmering suits, conversed in a series of pulsating lights. To my right, the Gravik Consortium, creatures of rock and mineral, communicated through subtle vibrations of their dense, craggy forms. The session began with the ringing of a clear, resonant bell, an ancient artifact of the founding species, signaling the call to order. The current chair of the council, a distinguished member of the Talari species, floated to the central podium. The Talari were known for their wisdom and fairness, qualities that emanated even from their translucent, jellyfish-like bodies. Ladies, gentlemen, and esteemed beings, the chair began, the universal translator rendering the speech into my earpiece in crisp, formal English. We are gathered here today to discuss matters of security and cooperation as we face the challenges that lie ahead for our united civilizations. The agenda moved swiftly. Delegates from various species presented their reports and proposals, each showcasing their technological advancements and contributions to the Council's projects. The Andarii proposed a new energy-sharing pact. The Gravik discussed asteroid mining regulations. Then it was my turn to speak. I stood feeling the weight of hundreds of skeptical eyes on me. Esteemed members of the Council, I started, my voice steady despite the nerves. I am here to represent humanity, a young species in terms of galactic presence, but one with unique attributes and potential contributions. A delegate from the Vorskan Empire, a reptilian species known for their militaristic culture, hissed softly. We are aware of the human race's reliance on primitive technologies such as missiles, how do you propose such antiquities benefit the Galactic Council? Their skepticism was expected. I had prepared for this. Our missile technology, while perhaps primitive in comparison to some of the Council's standards, is highly adaptable and capable of being upgraded with existing technologies. It is a proven, reliable system, which can be vital in unforeseen circumstances where more sophisticated technologies might fail. Murmurs filled the chamber, a mixture of curiosity and doubt. The Vorskan delegate scoffed. It is an obsolete approach in the face of energy shields and advanced defense systems that many of us possess. Perhaps, I conceded, but the value of any system, old or new, lies in its application. I propose a joint task force to explore the integration of human missile technology with your advanced systems. Together, we can create something greater than the sum of its parts. The room fell silent considering my proposal. The chair, floating gracefully above the podium, nodded. A thoughtful proposition, Ambassador. We shall take it under advisement. As the meeting adjourned, several delegates approached, expressing a mix of intrigue and politeness. It was clear that my work was cut out for me. Humanity had much to prove, but our journey on the galactic stage had truly begun. The next session of the Galactic Council was one I approached with a mixture of determination and apprehension. Following my initial proposal to integrate human missile technology into the Council's defense framework, there had been a period of informal discussions and debates among the members. Today, the topic was officially on the agenda, and I was set to present a more detailed argument in favor of my proposal. As the session commenced, I noticed the increased attendance, a testament to the curiosity and skepticism my previous statements had elicited. The chamber buzzed with low conversations as species of various forms and sizes settled into their designated areas. 
The chair called the session to order, and I was promptly invited to the podium. Clearing my throat, I began, Honorable members of the Council, I stand before you again to discuss what I believe is an underappreciated asset that humanity brings to our collective security, our missile technology. I paused, allowing my words to resonate in the translator devices. While these systems may seem outdated to many of you, I assure you that their simplicity and robustness make them invaluable. Our proposal is not to replace your advanced technologies, but to supplement them, to provide a fail-safe against scenarios where more complex systems could be compromised. Before I could continue, a delegate from the Forscan Empire stood up. His scales shimmered under the chamber lights as he spoke, his voice booming through the translators. Ambassador, with respect, your proposal lacks practicality in the face of our advancements. Our energy shields are impenetrable by such crude weaponry. Your missiles would be nothing more than relics on the battlefield. His words echoed around the chamber, and some nods of agreement followed. I responded, I appreciate your perspective. However, let us consider environments where your shields might be disrupted by natural phenomena or jamming technologies that we have yet to encounter. Our missiles could serve as a crucial backup in such cases. Another delegate from the technological advanced Cerulean Collective joined the conversation. Ambassador, our diagnostics and simulations show that even in scenarios you describe, the efficiency and impact of your missiles would be minimal. Why should we invest resources in a technology that is likely to be ineffective? The room filled with murmurs of agreement, and I felt the tide turning against us. I needed to make a stronger case. Consider this, I continued. Human history is rife with examples where simpler technologies provided strategic advantages under unforeseen circumstances. By integrating our systems with yours, we could develop hybrid solutions that might one day respond to threats that we can't yet imagine. The Cerulean delegate countered quickly, Your historical examples are noted, Ambassador, but we must plan based on probabilities and current data. The future threats you hypothesize do not align with our strategic models. The debate went back and forth, with several other species chiming in with their doubts and criticisms. The overarching sentiment was clear. The Council viewed human missile technology as obsolete and unsuitable for integration into their sophisticated defense mechanisms. After much discussion, the Chair summarized the Council's stance. Ambassador, while we recognize the sincerity of your proposal and the potential for unforeseen contingencies, the consensus is that the resources required for your plan would be better allocated towards advancing proven technologies. Feeling the weight of their dismissal, I thank the Council for their consideration. Thank you for your time and the opportunity to discuss this matter. I hope that future developments may yet prove the value of diversity in our defense strategies, including those from less advanced civilizations like ours. As the session adjourned, the lack of support was palpable. I walked back to my seat, pondering the next steps. It was clear that changing the Council's perspective would require more than just words. It would require undeniable evidence of the effectiveness of our technology in a real-world scenario. After the Council's dismissal of human missile technology, I returned to my duties with a sense of unease. Despite the setback, I remained engaged, attending sessions and staying updated on galactic developments. It wasn't long before an urgent session was called, one that would unexpectedly shift the Council's perspective on humanity's role and capabilities. As I entered the chamber, the atmosphere was charged with a palpable tension. Delegates were gathered in small groups, talking in hushed, urgent tones. The chair floated to the podium, signaling the start of the session with a somber tone that immediately drew everyone's attention. Ladies and gentlemen, the chair began, the translators working overtime as the message was relayed in countless languages. We face an unprecedented threat. A rogue black hole has been detected on a collision course with the Ortega sector, home to over five billion souls across multiple systems. A collective gasp echoed through the chamber, followed by a chaotic murmur. The Ortega sector was not only densely populated, but also a hub of interstellar commerce and diplomacy. The potential loss was unimaginable. The chair continued, Our best scientists and strategists have convened, but the usual measures and technologies at our disposal have proven inadequate against such a massive and unpredictable force. I listened intently, my mind racing. This was a scenario like the hypotheticals I had proposed, where conventional high-tech solutions might fall short. A delegate from the Cerulean Collective stood, his voice tense as he addressed the chamber. We have attempted to deploy energy diverters and gravitational field manipulators, but the sheer mass of the black hole makes these measures ineffective. 
We are open to any feasible suggestions. The room fell silent, the weight of the crisis dawning on everyone. That's when I saw my opportunity. Standing up, I cleared my throat, commanding the room's focus. If I may, I began, every eye turning towards me, some with curiosity, others with skepticism. Humanity may have a potential solution, albeit unconventional in this assembly's view. The Vorskan delegate snorted, his earlier disdain not forgotten. You speak of your primitive missiles again? Yes, I do, I replied, undeterred, but not in their usual capacity. We propose to modify our missiles to carry explosive payloads capable of precise detonation. These could potentially be used to alter the trajectory of the black hole, diverting it away from populated systems. A murmur spread across the room. The idea of using explosives against a black hole seemed absurd to many, but the desperation of the situation made even the unlikely worth considering. The Andarii delegate, their body pulsating with light, addressed me. Your proposal is bold, but how can you ensure precision in such chaotic gravitational conditions? We have engineers and physicists who specialize in extreme conditions, I explained. With modifications and the integration of some of your shielding technologies, we believe it's possible to create a missile capable of withstanding close proximity to a black hole long enough to deliver its payload accurately. The chair considered this, then nodded. Given the dire nature of our situation, we are inclined to explore all possible options. Ambassador, we authorize you to assemble a team and prepare a detailed plan for this mission. You will have access to any resources and expertise you require. Relief mixed with a heavy dose of reality washed over me. Thank you, Chair. We will commence immediately. As the session adjourned, several delegates approached, offering their technical support and expertise. The same individuals who had doubted the relevance of our technology now seemed eager to collaborate. The threat had indeed been unexpected, but it had opened a door for humanity to demonstrate our value beyond what the Council had previously recognized. As I left the chamber, my resolve was stronger than ever. This was our chance to not only save billions of lives, but also to prove that human ingenuity could play a crucial role in the galaxy. Following the Galactic Council's approval, I was tasked with leading a diverse team to devise a plan using human missile technology to avert the catastrophe posed by the rogue black hole. The mission was daunting, but also an opportunity to demonstrate humanity's unique contributions under extreme conditions. I convened the first meeting with our team, which included top human engineers and physicists, along with several alien scientists who brought a variety of perspectives and expertise. The primary objective was clear. Modify human missiles to deliver a series of high-yield explosions capable of altering the trajectory of the black hole. Our current missile technology is robust, but not suited for this kind of mission without significant modifications, I explained to the group. We were gathered in a high-security conference room with each member reviewing the initial schematics for the missile adaptations. Dr. Jonas, our lead physicist, outlined the challenges. The gravitational forces near the black hole are unlike anything we've designed for. Our payloads need to be not only powerful but also precisely timed to achieve the desired effect without being pulled into the black hole itself. An Andarii scientist, whose expertise was in gravitational fields, suggested, we could incorporate a phased array of graviton stabilizers to keep the missiles on course. This technology has been used in our exploration probes. That's a good start, I agreed. We'll need to integrate that with human navigation systems, which are designed for variable conditions. The engineering lead, a human named Carl, chimed in, I'll work with the Andari team on merging our guidance systems with their stabilizers. We'll also need to reinforce the structural integrity of the missiles to withstand the intense gravitational pull. As the meeting progressed, we discussed potential materials for the missile casing, propulsion alternatives, and explosive compounds. A Vorskan engineer suggested the use of a hyperdense alloy for the missile casings, known for its durability under extreme pressures. The composition of the payload is also critical, added Dr. Jonas. It needs to be potent enough to impact the black hole's path, but stable enough to handle the journey there. We have developed an explosive compound that might fit your needs, offered a Cerulean chemist. It's typically used in stellar mining operations, but could be adapted for your missiles. With each contribution, the plan became more refined. The collaborative atmosphere was a stark contrast to the earlier skepticism I had faced in the Council. It was clear that when faced with a common threat, the potential for unity and innovation was immense. By the end of the session, we had a rough blueprint of our strategy. The next steps involved detailed simulations and testing, 
followed by the production of the modified missiles. I appreciate everyone's efforts today, I concluded. We have a solid foundation for our plan. Let's keep the momentum going. We are not just aiming to save lives, but also to pave the way for new methods of collaboration and problem-solving in the galaxy. The meeting adjourned with team members feeling cautiously optimistic. Over the next few weeks, we worked relentlessly, conducting simulations, refining designs, and preparing for the critical launch. Throughout this process, I documented our progress meticulously, aware that the outcome would significantly impact humanity's standing within the Galactic Council. Whether we succeeded or failed, the lessons learned would reshape our approach to interstellar challenges and cooperation. The sense of responsibility was immense, but so was the pride in leading such a groundbreaking endeavor. We were on the brink of either a monumental success or a profound learning experience, and either outcome would undoubtedly contribute to our understanding of the universe. As the project led, I oversaw the final stages of preparation for a mission that was unprecedented in its scope and ambition. The collaboration between human and alien technologies had yielded a series of modified missiles, now ready for the task of diverting a rogue black hole, a threat that loomed larger with each passing day. In the sprawling hangar of the Galactic Assembly Space Station, our team conducted the final checks on the missiles. The air was thick with tension and anticipation. Each missile, encapsulated in hyperdense alloy and equipped with advanced navigation systems, stood as a testament to what we had achieved in such a short time. Carl, our engineering lead, approached me with a tablet showing the latest diagnostic results. All systems are green. The integration of the Vorsken alloy and the Andari graviton stabilizers is holding stable, he reported. Excellent, I replied, examining the data. And the payloads? They're secure and primed. The Cerulean explosive compounds are integrated into the missile cores. We're as ready as we'll ever be. I nodded, feeling a mix of relief and resolve. Let's begin the final briefing then. Gathering in the mission control room, the diverse team filled the seats, their faces marked by the gravity of the situation. The large screen at the front displayed the trajectory of the black hole and our intended interception points. I addressed the group, my voice steady. This is more than just a demonstration of human technology. It's a pivotal moment for galactic cooperation. Each of you has played a crucial role in getting us to this point. The risks are high, but the potential rewards, saving billions of lives and securing our place in the galaxy, are higher. Dr. Jonas, standing beside a holographic display of the missile trajectory, added, The timing of the launches must be precise. The calculations account for the gravitational variances we expect to encounter. Any deviation could undermine the entire operation. A Cerulean physicist interjected, What's the contingency if a missile fails to detonate at the designated point? We have redundancies built into the system, Carl explained. Each missile is part of a network that will recalibrate based on the status of its counterparts. If one fails, the others will adjust their detonation sequences to compensate. The team listened intently, understanding the complexity and precision required. The discussion then shifted to the communication protocols during the mission. Given the potential for gravitational interference, we'll maintain a continuous data stream with each missile. A communication specialist from the Andari contingent stated, Our systems are designed to cut through the most intense cosmic noise. As the briefing concluded, the team members returned to their stations, their steps purposeful. I remained behind for a moment, watching the screen, where the digital countdown steadily ticked lower. Walking through the hangar once more, I stopped by each missile, inspecting the units that would carry out this critical mission. The blend of technologies was seamless, a symbol of our united front against a common enemy. Ready to make history? Carl asked as he joined me by one of the launch pads. Let's just hope it's the kind we want to remember, I responded, allowing myself a small smile. We both knew the stakes. The final hours before launch were a blur of activity. Technicians and scientists made their last adjustments and checks. In mission control, the atmosphere was a mixture of nerves and focused concentration. I took my place at the command station, where I would oversee the launch sequence. Mission control to all units, we are at T-minus one hour to launch, I announced over the comms, my voice echoing through the station. As responses from various stations confirmed readiness, I looked around at the assembled team. This was the culmination of not just weeks of frantic work, but of a newfound alliance among the stars. Whatever the outcome, we had already achieved something remarkable. Let's show them what we can do, I said quietly to myself, ready to face whatever came next. 
The launch day arrived with a mix of apprehension and anticipation. The control room was buzzing as the final countdown began. Each team member was stationed at their post, monitoring the systems that would control the trajectory and detonation of the missiles. My role was to oversee the entire operation, ensuring that each phase of the launch sequence was executed perfectly. Control, this is navigation. All systems are go for launch sequence initiation, reported the navigation lead, a seasoned pilot from the Gravik Consortium whose expertise was critical for the mission. Understood, navigation. Proceed with countdown, I responded, my voice calm but firm over the communication system. The room fell silent as the final checks were completed. The large screen at the front displayed the status of each missile, all lined up on the launch platform outside, visible through the observation windows of the control room. Commencing countdown, T-10, 9, 8. The automated voice filled the room, each number echoing slightly in the tense atmosphere. 7, 6, 5. My heart raced as the numbers decreased, each second bringing us closer to the moment of truth. 4, 3, 2. I glanced around the room, seeing the intense focus on every face. 1, launch! The command was given and the room vibrated slightly as the missiles ignited and soared into the dark expanse of space. Tracking is stable. Trajectory is as planned, announced the tracking specialist, relief evident in his voice as the initial stages of the launch went smoothly. The screen showed the missiles as small points of light, moving away from the space station and towards their target. Navigation, update on trajectory alignment, I requested, keeping my eyes fixed on the screen. Trajectories are holding within acceptable parameters. Graviton stabilizers are functioning within expected ranges, came the response. The information delivered with precision and calm. As the missiles approached the black hole, the real test of our planning and technology began. The gravitational forces increased, as indicated by the readings coming back to us. Gravitational pull is stronger than anticipated. Adjusting navigation protocols accordingly, said the pilot, his hands moving quickly over his controls. Keep me updated on any deviations from the mission plan, I instructed, aware that even minor miscalculations could jeopardize the entire mission. The minutes stretched on, each one filled with reports and adjustments. The missiles were now close enough to begin preparing for detonation. Prepare for sequential detonations on my mark, I ordered, knowing that timing was everything. Detonation sequence ready, confirmed the explosive specialist, a human expert in ordnance. Mark, I said, and the room held its breath as the first missile exploded, designed to push against the black hole's path. Initial detonation successful, impact on trajectory confirmed came the exhilarating update. Cheers broke out in the control room, but we were not done yet. Proceed with the next detonation, I continued, the mission far from over. One by one, the missiles exploded at precisely calculated intervals, each one designed to progressively alter the course of the black hole away from the populated sectors. With each confirmation of a successful detonation, the atmosphere in the control room grew more hopeful. Final missile detonation in three, two, one, detonate. The last missile exploded, its impact crucial for the success of the entire operation. Final detonation confirmed. Black hole trajectory has been successfully altered. It is no longer on a collision course with the Ortega sector, reported the lead analyst, his voice a mixture of relief and disbelief. The control room erupted in applause, the tension finally breaking. We had done it. Against all odds, our plan had worked. The team exchanged smiles and congratulations, proud of the success. I want to thank each and every one of you, I said, addressing the room. This was a mission unlike any other, and it was your expertise and dedication that made it successful. Humanity and our allies in the Galactic Council owe you their gratitude. As the team began to relax and discuss the mission, I took a moment to reflect on what we had achieved. Not only had we saved billions of lives, but we had also demonstrated the effectiveness of human technology and the power of collaboration among diverse species. Control, let's begin post-mission analysis. We need to document everything we've learned from this operation, I instructed, turning back to the consoles. The mission was a success, but our work was not done. The lessons learned from this experience would inform future operations and, hopefully, encourage further cooperation within the Galactic Council. The success of the missile operation was more than a technical achievement. It was a moment of profound significance for human contributions to the Galactic Council. As the final missile detonated and successfully altered the trajectory of the rogue black hole, the mood in mission control shifted from tense concentration to jubilant relief. 
Trajectory alteration confirmed. The black hole is now on a safe course away from populated sectors, announced the lead analyst, his voice echoing through the control room. A spontaneous round of applause broke out among the team members, a mixture of human and alien specialists who had worked tirelessly to ensure the success of this critical mission. I allowed myself a moment to join in the celebration, feeling a deep sense of pride in our collective effort. As the news of our success spread, reactions from across the Galactic Council began to pour in. The immediate threat to the Ortega sector had been averted, and the potential loss of billions of lives was now just a frightening what-if scenario. We did it, Carl said, coming over to me with a wide grin. You know, there were moments when I doubted we'd pull it off. I think we all did at some point, I admitted, but we stuck with it and it paid off. This is a big win for everyone. The chair of the Galactic Council called a special session to discuss the outcome of the mission. As I prepared to speak at the session, I felt a different kind of nervousness, not from uncertainty about our plan, but from the weight of its success. Ladies and gentlemen of the Council, I began, standing before the assembly of the galaxy's most influential leaders. Today marks a pivotal moment in our collective history. The success of this mission is not just a victory for humanity, but for all members of the Council. It demonstrates the value of diverse technologies and perspectives in solving universal threats. Murmurs of agreement filled the chamber, a stark contrast to the skepticism that had initially met my proposals. A delegate from the Forscan Empire, who had been particularly critical of the plan, stood up. Ambassador, I must admit I was skeptical of your approach. However, the results speak for themselves. You have not only saved countless lives, but also shown the importance of innovation and collaboration. The Vorskan Empire is grateful for your leadership in this endeavor. Thank you, I responded, appreciating the delegate's acknowledgement. This mission has taught us all the importance of keeping an open mind to all possibilities. Following the session, the Council agreed to establish a new committee dedicated to integrating and advancing technologies from different civilizations, with a specific focus on preparing for and mitigating cosmic threats. I was asked to serve as one of the committee's co-chairs, a role I accepted with the intent to foster more collaborative projects like the one we had just completed. Back in mission control, the team was busy preparing reports and analyses of the mission. The data we gathered would be invaluable for future operations and for improving our technologies. Let's ensure we document everything thoroughly, I instructed the team. Every piece of data, every challenge we faced, and how we overcame it. It's not just for us, it's for the future of the Council and any who might face similar threats. As we worked, I received messages from various leaders and citizens from the sectors we had saved. They expressed their gratitude and relief, and many were particularly struck by the effectiveness of a human-led initiative. In the days that followed, media outlets across the galaxy covered the story extensively. The narrative had shifted from doubt about human capabilities to recognition of our integral role within the Galactic Council. The success of the mission was not only a testament to human ingenuity, but also to the strength found in unity. This moment was a turning point, not just for how humanity was viewed in the eyes of the galaxy, but for how we viewed ourselves, a capable, innovative member of a much larger community. Following the successful diversion of the rogue black hole, there was a palpable shift in the perception of human technological capabilities within the Galactic Council. The re-evaluation of our missile technology, which had been previously dismissed as outdated, became a topic of considerable interest and discussion among the various member species. In the weeks that followed, I attended numerous meetings and forums designed to discuss the integration of human technology into broader galactic defense strategies. It was a stark contrast to the initial skepticism I had faced when first proposing our plan. Your success has opened many eyes, including my own, confessed a delegate from the Cerulean Collective during one of these meetings. We are interested in exploring how other human technologies might be adapted for galactic use. It seems we have much to learn from each other. Indeed, I agreed. Humanity has often had to be resourceful and adaptive, traits that can be beneficial on a galactic scale. We look forward to sharing our technology and learning from the vast array of advancements that member species have made. The forums led to the establishment of several joint research initiatives, one such initiative was focused on enhancing missile technology with alien energy systems, increasing their efficiency and power. Another explored the application of human-designed navigation systems, which had proven exceptionally robust under extreme conditions, in other Council projects. 
During a technical symposium hosted by the Galactic Council, I presented a paper on the design modifications that had enabled our missiles to function near the black hole. The presentation was well received, sparking lively discussions on the potential applications of similar design principles in civilian and military spacecraft. Your approach to modular design is quite fascinating, commented an engineer from the Andari species. We have systems that could benefit from such adaptability. Perhaps a joint workshop could be arranged. I think that would be most beneficial, I responded enthusiastically. Bringing our technical teams together could lead to breakthroughs we can scarcely imagine now. The re-evaluation wasn't limited to formal meetings and symposia. Informal exchanges and collaborations began to take shape as more alien technologists expressed interest in human engineering philosophies, particularly our penchant for creating durable and repairable technology. In one instance, a delegation of Vorskan engineers visited Earth to tour our research facilities and discuss potential collaborations. The visit was covered extensively by media outlets across the galaxy, highlighting the newfound respect for human technological contributions. We see now that sophistication isn't solely about complexity, said the head of the Vorskan delegation during a press conference. There is sophistication in simplicity, in designing something to do its job under any circumstances. This is something your species excels at. This re-evaluation also led to an increase in funding and resources for human-led research projects. The Galactic Council approved several grants for the development of new technologies, signaling a new era of investment in human potential. As these developments unfolded, I maintained a series of communications with the leaders of the Council, discussing ways to ensure that the momentum wasn't lost. It was essential to capitalize on this opportunity to cement humanity's place as a valued member of the galactic community. The success of this mission has not only saved billions of lives, but has also paved the way for a richer, more integrated council, I stated in a key policy meeting. Let us continue to build on this foundation, fostering innovation and cooperation that extends beyond crises. The response was overwhelmingly positive, with many nodding their agreement. It was clear that the events surrounding the black hole had altered the trajectory of human participation in galactic affairs just as significantly as we had altered the trajectory of that cosmic threat. As I concluded my presentation, I felt a profound sense of accomplishment. Not only had we averted a disaster, but we had also triggered a renaissance of appreciation and respect for human ingenuity. This was a new beginning, and I was eager to see how far this new respect could take us. Following the re-evaluation of human technology by the Galactic Council, a proactive initiative was launched to foster deeper integration and collaboration between human engineers and their counterparts from other civilizations. As a central figure in these efforts, I was tasked with overseeing the development of joint programs that could leverage the unique strengths of each species' technological advancements. The first step in this ambitious endeavor was the establishment of an Intergalactic Technology Exchange Program, IETEP, I chaired the inaugural meeting, which was attended by delegates and technical experts from over 20 different species. The meeting room, a large circular hall within the Galactic Assembly Space Station, was filled with a sense of purpose and curiosity. As we embark on this journey together, let us be guided by the principles of mutual respect and shared learning, I began, addressing the gathered assembly. The ITEP is not just about merging technologies, it's about creating something greater than the sum of its parts. A delegate from the Andarii species, renowned for their advanced energy systems, proposed the first project under the ITEP. We suggest a collaborative effort to develop a new propulsion system that combines human mechanical reliability with Andarii energy efficiency, he explained, displaying preliminary concepts on the screen. An excellent proposal, I replied. Let's establish a working group to explore this further. Our aim should be to produce a prototype within the year. The discussions that followed were robust and productive. Various project ideas were put forth, ranging from advancements in medical technology to enhancements in agricultural systems, each suggesting a blend of different technological philosophies and techniques. One particularly exciting initiative was the development of a disaster response system that could be rapidly deployed in any part of the galaxy. The system would integrate human engineering with Gravik structural design and Vorscan sensory technology, creating a versatile and highly effective response unit. I believe this project could significantly enhance our collective ability to respond to emergencies, I stated during a planning session. It embodies the spirit of our collaboration. 
diverse technologies working together to serve a common good. The response from the Council and the various delegations was overwhelmingly positive. Funding was secured and teams were assembled to begin work on the proposed projects. As these initiatives progressed, regular workshops and symposiums were held to facilitate knowledge exchange and address any challenges arising from the integration of such diverse technologies. During one such workshop, a human engineer and a Cerulean physicist co-presented their findings on a new type of sensor array they were developing. Our collaboration has not only enhanced the sensor's capabilities, but also introduced a new way to manufacture the components using less material and energy, explained the Cerulean physicist. The human engineer added, Working together has taught us a lot about leveraging our respective strengths. It's been a rewarding challenge. These workshops became a cornerstone of the ITEP, celebrated for their role in not only advancing technology, but also building personal and professional relationships across species. The atmosphere at these gatherings was always one of camaraderie and mutual respect. Beyond the technical achievements, the cultural exchange that occurred was profound. Teams from different worlds shared not just their scientific knowledge, but also their customs and traditions, enriching the experience for everyone involved. Seeing our technologies and people integrate so seamlessly gives me great hope for the future of the Galactic Council, I shared during an ITEP review meeting. These collaborations go beyond science and engineering. They are a testament to the unity and potential of our combined civilizations. As the ITEP matured, it became a model for other intergalactic initiatives, demonstrating the benefits of cooperative engagement and setting a precedent for future partnerships. The success of our integration and collaboration efforts was a beacon of what could be achieved when diverse groups worked together towards a common goal. Reflecting on the progress made, it was clear that the path we were on was not just about technological advancement, but also about forging a deeper understanding and respect among the varied members of the galactic community. As I reflect on the journey that began with skepticism and led to unprecedented collaboration, I am struck by the profound impact of our collective efforts on the Galactic Council and its member species. The integration and collaboration initiatives that stemmed from the successful missile operation not only changed perceptions of human technology, but also fostered a deeper, more meaningful connection among the diverse civilizations that make up our galaxy. In the concluding session of the Intergalactic Technology Exchange Program, ITEP, for the year, I addressed an assembly of delegates, engineers, scientists, and dignitaries from across the galaxy. The auditorium was filled with representatives eager to hear about the progress of our joint initiatives and to discuss the path forward. Ladies and gentlemen, I began, over the past months we've seen our collaborative efforts bear fruit in ways that many of us could not have anticipated. We've not only developed technologies that will benefit our respective worlds, but have laid down the foundations for a future where cooperation is the norm, not the exception. As I spoke, the large screen behind me displayed images of the various projects, advanced propulsion systems, disaster response units, and new sensor arrays, all symbols of what we had achieved together. We have shown that when we come together, pooling our knowledge, skills, and resources, the possibilities are boundless, I continued. Today, I am proud to report that the Propulsion System Project, a joint venture between human engineers and Andari energy specialists, has not only succeeded in its initial tests, but has been approved for production. Applause filled the room, and the Andari delegate nodded appreciatively, his face aglow with the soft light of his species' natural luminescence. But let us not rest on our laurels, I urged. Let this be the beginning, not the end, of our endeavors. Let us continue to seek out new areas of cooperation, to challenge ourselves to think beyond the confines of our own worlds. After the session, a young engineer from the Gravik Consortium approached me. Your words today were inspiring, he said. It gives me hope that my generation will inherit a galaxy where collaboration is the cornerstone of how we overcome challenges. Thank you, I replied, heartened by his words. It is the efforts of individuals like you, willing to reach across star systems to work together, that will ensure the success of our galactic community. As the ITEP concluded its first year, the Council announced that the program would be expanded, with increased funding and resources to support even more ambitious projects. Additionally, a new cultural exchange program was proposed, inspired by the friendships and mutual respect that had developed among the teams. Reflecting on these developments, I penned an article for the Galactic Chronicle, 
outlining our achievements and the lessons learned. The article concluded with a call to action. Let us take the lessons of the ITEP to heart and strive to be more than just neighbors in this vast galaxy. Let us be partners in shaping a future that values unity, respect, and the pursuit of knowledge. The response to the article was overwhelmingly positive, with many citing it as a catalyst for broader societal discussions about the role of technology and cooperation in galactic affairs. As I sat in my office looking out at the stars, I felt a profound sense of accomplishment and optimism. The path we had charted was not without its challenges, but it was rich with potential. Humanity had not only found its place in the Galactic Council, but had also helped forge a path toward a more cooperative and harmonious galaxy. In the end, the legacy of our efforts would be measured not just by the technologies we developed, but by the bridges we built. It was a legacy that I hoped would endure, guiding future generations to continue the work we had begun. This journey, from the brink of catastrophe to the pinnacle of cooperative success, had changed us all. It had shown that even in a galaxy as vast and diverse as ours, common ground could always be found, and shared challenges could bring out the best in us all.